Sports good. We back. Motor City Sports Talk. We back with another Blast Draft. I might do another Blast Draft tonight if you guys want to. Let me know in the comment section. And um, and probably during the week, so I'll drop a Blast Draft. And Blast Draft is where we go back and review the Detroit Lions uh, uh, draft and see if it was successful or how really not successful really it was. And this draft was selected by Martin Mayhew and uh, with the Tom Lewan as well. Tom Lewan did more of the contracts. Martin Mayhew... Uh, did more of the personnel picking. And uh, we're taking a look at the 2013 NFL Draft, which was number five. We picked Ziggy Ansa. And uh, in hindsight, <laughs> that was an excellent pick because Eric Fisher went one, Luke Joker went two, Deion Jordan went three, and Lane Johnson went four. Lane Johnson had multiple PD uh, failed drug tests in the NFL, but he won a championship with the... Uh, Eagles, um, and Deion Jordan, he can't find a place in the league, and Luke Joku, I don't know where he at, Eric Fisher is an average uh, offensive tackle at best in the NFL, and uh, we took Ziggy Anson, and after that was Bartavius Mingo, Jonathan Cooper, who ain't did nothing, Mingo ain't did nothing either, Tavon Austin, who ain't did nothing, Dean Milliner, that never did nothing, Chaz Warmack, I don't remember him doing nothing, DJ Fluker, I think he's still with the Chargers, DJ Hayden, he just left with us, so we already know that they Sheldon Richardson, he got police problems and don't seem to be playing as good as he was. Starlay Lute, he was straight. Kenny Vaccaro tore his hip up. EJ Manuel, uh, eh. Jarvis Jones, uh, eh. Eric Reed, um, solid, but he's getting blackballed out the league for protesting with Callan Kaepernick and beyond. Justin Pugh, Kyle Long, Kyle Eifert, Tyler Eifert, he always injured. That's what you find. He's no longer in the league, I don't believe. Sharif Floyd, uh, he played. I think he played for the Vikings, so I don't know what really went on with him. Boyan Warner, he never panned out. Xavier Rhodes, um, he's one of the top corners. Uh, we in the 26s now. Dante Jones, he didn't pan out for the Green Bay Packers. DeAndre Hopkins, he top five receiver in my opinion. So the bottom of the draft, uh, Travis Frederick went 31st. He's an all-pro center, I believe, or once was. So, I mean, the Lions legitimately got it right. And, um, and also, Sylvester Williams, he's number 28. He's with us now um, as a defensive tackle. So, Lions like they got it right. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of misses in the top fifteen, the top twenty, twenty five of this draft. So, um, you know, Ziggy Ansa was was a good pick. You know, in hindsight now, a lot of these guys not even in the league no more. So, uh, you know what it is. And then the second round, the top of the second round, we took Darius Big Play Slay, and that was probably one of our most successful second round picks in in a long time. From I mean, I remember we had a lot of misses in the second round, and we took him with the fifth pick in the second round, and um. You know, I think it was a beautiful thing, man. Um, I think both of these guys are two cornerstones of our defense. Just the fact that Ziggy Ansah can't stay healthy. But these were two dead-on picks. Now, um, this wasn't the number one pick where it's hard to miss, but it was a top five pick. But it was a lot of misses after Ziggy Ansah. And it was a lot of talks that the Lions take Ziggy Ansah, Bartavius Mingo, or somebody else. And it seems like Martin Mayhew actually got it right. You know, he got it right with uh, Darius Slay because after Slay went, it was, Manti, well, it was uh, Giovanni Bernard, Manti Teo, Geno Smith. Um, You know, Robert Woods is a good player right now. Jonathan Banks went after him. And some people had Jonathan Banks rated higher than Darius Slay, who came out of Juco in Mississippi State. But obviously, that was a line. Jonathan Banks played with the Lions before. And uh, Kawan Short, he was solid with the Carolina Panthers at a point in time. Uh, Kiko Alonzo, injuries killed him off. Jonathan Hank is another guy that the Lions are looking to bring in right now at Ohio State in the second round. And before him, Le'Veon Bell split to 48. So, I mean, I don't think anybody's seen <laughs> Le'Veon Bell, you know, coming in there. And uh, Jamie Collins, who was with the Patriots, not with the Browns. So, um, it seems like the Lions got it right again, you know, in the second round. There was some other solid picks in there. Eddie Lacy, even though he went down by now. Um um, so it was, a, it was a lot of solid picks in there, man. It's like Mayhew uh, legitimately got it right, you know, with the second pick. And this was another underrated pick, man. Uh, Larry Warford. Larry Warford came in and was a monster at uh, at guard for the Lions. You know what I'm saying? He was a monster. I believe he was at right guard. And uh, Rob Sims was at left guard when he first got here. And that was another really, really strong pick in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a third round for the Lions, man. Before him, the first pick in the third round that year was Travis Kelsey. And he's an all-pro uh, tight end, so a lot of people missed on Travis Kelsey. Um, Tyron Matthew, he was a trouble guy. He went after the Lions. The Lions could have picked him. Um, you know, Benny Logan, I mean, eh. You know, Keenan Allen won in the third round. So, it, it was some picks, you know, in the third round here, man. 
Um, but you know, it seemed like the Lions got a steal, and the guy who actually uh spotted uh who scouted uh uh, uh Larry Warford, he actually got a uh promotion within the Lions organization because he did such a good job. But eventually, Larry Warford just kept getting injured. He was injury prone. He came from Kentucky, I believe. He was just getting injured and injured. But when he played, it was significant. It was a good player, you know. And uh, but he could just never stay healthy, and the Lions end up letting him walk to New Orleans. But in my opinion, you know, those are three good picks. You know, those are probably three consecutive picks like that. First, second, and third round. Those were the, probably the three best consecutive picks that Mark Mayhew had ever chosen in any draft. You know, probably the best ones, man. But then you go to Devin Taylor in the fourth round. Um, eh, I mean, he just fell off, man. See how like he was making so much improvement, man, and um, you know. He just legitimately fell off the face of the earth. And, um, you know, it looked like uh, as far as Devin Taylor, we got him at the end of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the fourth round. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is. It was a value pick. He was long. I mean, um, he wasn't the, the, the Davion Clowney. He played next to him, but he was long and strong. But, I mean, he just didn't pan out. Just regressed, especially his last year here. He just... He just legitimately regressed. And um seriously, it wasn't I mean it wasn't nobody uh that we missed on that I'm looking at here other than Nane Watson. I see then Kenny Steels, you know. So going into the fifth round, you know, you know it is what it is. Michael Hyde was there, you know. I think uh we missed on him, but then we took a punter Sam Martin in the fifth round. You know, other than that one year where he kicked the ball and he lost us the game when he first got here, I believe. He's been a good punter, man. Been a fantastic pick. Um, you know, that's a high pick for a punter, man. <laughs> a very, very high pick, man. And we picked him at the end of the fifth round. So uh that was a that was a really, really solid pick. You know, Sam Martin is still here, he's still paying dividends. So, you know, legitimately the Lions are still have three of these players uh going on eighteen going uh five years later. We went into two thousand eighteen. So Larry Warford would still be here, and he was a good player, but he wasn't healthy. And I think he's doing pretty solid with the. Uh, I think he's doing pretty solid with the New Orleans Saints. But then you know you go into the sixth round, we took Corey Fuller. He was a track guy, and we took him at the top of the sixth round, and um, he was a track guy. And um, you know he made one big catch one year to win the game, and other than that, really didn't hear from him. He never materialized into to learn how to play receiver. His brother played for the Bears, and I think he had another brother. Coming out of Virginia Tech to play a corner, just like his brother Kyle. I think it was Kendall Fuller. But Corey Fuller, he just didn't materialize. He seemed like he had the long speed, but he would just, you know, he, you know Stafford would throw it deep and just he would just never catch it, you know, or they just never formed that rapport in, in, in that camaraderie, man. But Corey Fuller, he had a lot of speed. He had a lot of height. He had potential, but he just never materialized, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, you know it, it is what it is, though, man. He, he was a fast guy, though. You know, we thought with well, Stafford's big arm and, um, you know, his speed, we thought he was going to do good. And also in the sixth round at the 199th pick, we took Theo Reddick out of Notre Dame, and he's still with the team. So that's four picks in the draft that, you know, five years later that Theo Reddick, he makes five in this draft that's still with the team. And um, he's a fantastic gadget, gadget guy. Uh, he can play the slot receiver. He can play running back. He can catch the ball out the backfield. Excuse me. Um. And he does a lot of things for us. He's a very integral part in his team. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, uh, I think he's one of the best receiving backs out the NFL. I think he get overlooked being the best uh, receiving back out the NFL, man. I really do think, you know, uh, teams overlook him. And he's a, mis he's a mismatch nightmare for a safety, for a linebacker coming out the backfield, whoever, you know. It ain't too many people that can stay with him, especially coming out them, in them out routes or them Texas routes. Uh, he's, he's a straight monster. And then – um. You know, they had another pick as well. Uh, I think they might have had two seventh-round picks. One was Michael Williams, yep, 211, tight end Alabama. He could block, really wasn't known as receiving tight end. They would try to turn him into an offensive lineman. Um, I don't believe that worked. <laughs> Obviously, he's still not here, I don't believe. Uh, it didn't work for them. So, uh, Michael Williams, you know, he didn't, I mean, like I said, he's supposed to be this blocking tight end. He couldn't even, you know, he wasn't more of the receiver type. And they tried to turn him into an offensive lineman and didn't work. And at 245, they took the dude out of FAMU, uh, Brandon uh, Hipburn. Um, I don't think he made any impact with the Lions. He had good height at 6'4", but I don't remember him making any impact. He didn't stick, but 
to give her a little overview of, of, of this draft. Um, this is probably one of, uh, just without really looking at the rest of them and just knowing my Lions history, this probably might have been the most successful draft that Martin Mayhew had. You know, I mean, actually, one, two, three, four of these picks are still on the team. And I believe he would have had five sit on the team if Larry Warford was able to stay healthy. So this is one of his best drives. You know, he legitimately, I mean, he religiously missed the second round with maybe Titus Young or Wyoming Burroughs. He couldn't. He couldn't keep, he couldn't hit on the second round to save his life. And this was Darius Slay might have been his best second round overall pick. I mean second round pick. And he hit with Ziggy Ansa when a lot of other teams inside the top five, inside the top ten, shit, the top twenty, excuse my language was missed. You know, a lot of teams missed. And he got it right with Ziggy Ansa. He got it right with Sam Martin. He got it right with Theoretic. I thought they got it right with Larry Warford as well, but he just was too injury prone. Now he went to New Orleans. So um, you know, draft blast if you want another draft blast. Uh, today, let me know in the comment section. I do be, I do, I do look. We might come back with a Pistons video as well. And we did a video on Zaza Petulia signing with the Detroit Pistons. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All those links are in the description as well. I uh, appreciate everybody for subscribing and sharing the videos. And hopefully, you guys are enjoying this new installment we call Draft uh, Draft Blast, man. And I'll put the old, the first Draft Blast we did in the link in the description. If I forget, just go ahead and hit me up. If you got a video request or questions, go ahead and... uh. You know, DM me at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow me there. All those links are in the description. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share. Share the videos. Appreciate everybody. New media in Detroit.